Good morning, this is Jill, and you know this to be one of my places of abundance. I want to talk about digestion today and your microbiome. Um, and a shout out to Dr. John Duyard for inspiring, uh, inspiring this last week. You are a living, complex being, right? Not, you're not a machine. And yet, I find that when people are talking about supplements and they're talking about the things that they take or any of that, it's really a mechanistic point of view. They don't take into account your microbiome and how you interact with your, I guess you'd call it your macro biome. But your microbiome, the flora and fauna in your guts, it changes out seasonally. I'm looking at my garden here in the background. Um, if you do a soil test on your garden and you do a really good one that will tell you about the organic material, about what is available for your plants to uptake, that changes from spring to fall, midsummer. If you take it in the dead of winter, it's different again because the flora and fauna in your soil that makes the nutrients available to your plants in the rhizomes and the flora and fauna on the plant roots themselves changes out seasonally. As the plant goes through its growth phases, as the season goes from the vibrant bursting energy of spring to the really deeply nourishing and growing, growing energy of summer, midsummer, to the going back to sleep, pulling back down, slowing down energy of fall. It all changes. You're part of the environment and you're no different. So when we talked about digestion in our group, uh, in my course group, the Abundant Living course group on last week, we talked about how your digestion changes. And if you really want to digest your food and get the most out of it, your best diet is what's in front of you at any given moment. So, when you look at the probiotics that you're taking, do they have any seasonal components to them? Um, Dr. Duyard talks about this. He sells supplements, but they're made out of whole foods. When you look at the food around you, what's available right now? Right now, in northern Michigan, we've got a lot of greens. Uh, the dark leafy greens yet? Kale and spinach. Uh, I've got a ton of weeds coming up that I'm eating. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing a weed walk in July at the event here on Baker's Green Acres. So if you want more information about that, let me know. Um, and I'm also going to do a couple others and I'll keep you posted on that because there's huge abundance in the food that is growing around you that's adapted to your macrobiome, which you're also adapted to, and that will nourish your body uniquely. <clears throat> um, there's been talk about pine needle tea for vitamin C. Um, the weeds that are around you are really high in vitamin C. You may have heard that about spinach. Ounce for ounce, lamb's quarter has more by something like six times. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. There's great abundance for you when you eat what is immediately around you. I have another, uh, one of the gals in the group lives in Montana and there's sagebrush around her. But she has goats. Goats eat sagebrush. Goats eat uh, an invasive weed that she has out there that I can't remember the name of. And they convert it into fat and into protein. And if she eats that, she gets all of the byproducts of that. So when that is what is around you, it's worth exploring what's there. Um, there's much to be said about your microbiome and local seasonal eating. This year, I'm not planning to do a lot of canning. I'm going to do some fermenting because we're out of kimchi. But other than that, I don't plan to do a lot because I'm really exploring this thing about eating 
really truly exactly what's in front of us in any given season. So as the vegetables fade, the things that we can put into storage with no extra effort. You know, it doesn't take much to carry a squash from the garden to the root cellar or to put carrots away. There's not a lot of extra input needed. So that, and that is the food that feeds you best through the winter, is those easy to store foods, not the ones that require a huge amount of extra input, non-natural input. It's an interesting thing to look at, and I challenge you to take more. Uh, look at it. I can share resources if you're interested. The other interesting thing about your microbiome is that it responds to your thoughts. Uh, this group is about good living, abundance, finding the natural ways to thrive and flourish that are around us and in us right now, as we speak. Your thoughts are how you bathe your cells, how you prepare them. Uh, this is, Dr. Diard talked about this. This is also something I've been learning from a guy named David Nagel, who's read a lot of older writers and is teaching about that. When you have an expectation in your head of dinner, say you're gonna have grilled chicken and salad. You sit down to eat and it's awesome and it feels good. Uh, stop and feel a minute how your body responds to your dinner. It'll say thank you. If you had an expectation of grilled chicken and salad and what showed up on your plate was peanut butter and jelly, how would that work out? That's a whole different feeling. When you have a thought and expectation and anticipation of what you are going to eat, your body, your cells actually prepare themselves to receive it. What you think about receiving is what you receive. If you have an expectation that supper is going to be nasty and gross and you don't really want to eat it, your body's not going to receive it. When you sit down with gratitude to the table, and you receive it with gratitude, you have an expectation of a good experience, your cells will be prepared to receive whatever goodness there is from your food. That's one of the reasons, way, way back when, that we sit down and say grace before a meal. Because it sets up your digestion, your microbiome, to receive your food, to be nourished by it, and to do what it needs to do in your body with what it is. Your microbiome matters a lot. Your thoughts matter with your microbiome. And that's true of your digestion. It's also true of your digestion of life. Uh, what you expect out of life is what you're going to get. Exactly. Perfectly. So it's an interesting thing. So, this week, pay attention to what's really local around you. What is exactly in front of you right now that your body is adapted and set up to receive, food-wise? And notice your thoughts this week. When you feel resistance to something, reluctance, just pay attention to the messages that pop into your head related to that. If you're really anticipating something, pay attention to the messages involved in that. Just notice. Notice how your thoughts set you up to receive things. That's part of digesting life and enjoying it, having a good life, and experiencing the abundance and joy that's available to you. Uh, if necessary, rewrite the script, but just pay attention this week. See what happens. So that's it. If you would like to talk to me individually and get more ideas, better ways that you can help your digestion this week, let me know. Um, I'm available. It's one of the free things that I offer to you in this group. Uh, happy to talk to you about digestion naturally, what's available, your microbiome, ways to hack it. So have a great and a 
abundant week and look forward to talking to you.